Good evening, six o'clock, and welcome back to another live of The Road Less Travelled. This evening, we are inviting the delightful uh, Juliet Lemon to join us. Juliet is a photographer and has a passion for, has an absolute passion for Africa, is, um, has been, has been doing wildlife photography since 2001. Other lens assignments have included the royal family, the Le Mans endurance car race in France. And just before lockdown, we had the, um, she embarked on a 26 day around the world private jet wildlife safari, visiting Japan, Malaysia, the Philippines, India, Madagascar. So anything to do with wildlife photography, then Juliet is our lady. So looking forward to getting her on board and sending the invitation again, because I seem to have missed it out. Here she is. Hi. Hello, my darling. Hi, I'm so sorry I managed to, uh, I don't know, just press the wrong button a minute ago. So here we are, we're back again. Not can you all. hear me? Yes, and can you hear me? Absolutely, loud and clear. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Travel Producers uh, Instagram Lives, A Road Less Travelled. And I'm looking forward to what's going to be an exciting evening uh, with you because, boy, oh boy, have you got experiences mm. and the love of travel, like most of our listeners, that you can share with us. So, um, photographer, wildlife, safaris, Africa, 26 around 26 day private jet around the world tell us how did this all start oh my gosh well first off how strange is it talking about travels these days when we I just know. can't do it it seems like a different world but yes mm -hmm. interesting that around the world trip started off with a connection through twitter about six years ago so in all honesty it's just crazy because you do not know where your next big thing is going to come from um i was sponsored by an amazing camera bag company camera gear company called peak design and um a couple of years ago they um when, when I, I first connected with them a photographer over in, in america complimented me on my bag and said how come you get sponsored and so we had this kind of cool chat about it and arranged to catch up when we were both in the same country which was london you know um and yeah and then we just started passing each other jobs and then we we ended up doing an assignment together in mexico photo shoot in mexico and then through that there was the private jet connection and yes the month before lockdown started i embarked on the 26th day around the world by private jet wildlife safari for abercrombie and kent and it was the stuff of dreams it was absolutely amazing so yeah, you, you touched on it briefly. Um, I flew over to the States for two days and then the trip started and we all went to, we embarked on our private jet and which is a wonderful way to travel. And then went to Japan to go and see the snow monkeys and obviously experience Tokyo and all the amazing culture and everything that that wonderful city has to offer. And then from there went to the Philippines where we saw Tarsia, which the tiny, tiny primates, and they're they're adorable. They look like um, the little gizmo thing off the um, what the like the gremlins. Looks like little oh, gizmo right. things. So cute. Um, and then also swam with whale sharks there, which was incredible. And then from there went to Borneo to see the orangutans and proboscis monkeys. And then India for the tigers and then over to Africa where we went to Rwanda and tracked with the gorillas and saw golden monkeys as well as going to Madagascar for the lemurs and then our final destination was Kenya for the big five on safari in the Maasai Mara. And how <laughs> ironical that it should be that that takes you like full circle through your story of where you started doing your, photo your safari photography back in 2001 yeah that just before we all get locked down you should end up back in what I believe is your favorite destination is yeah. Africa Africa is yeah it's it's just it's my favorite place in the whole entire world yes very much so so what what top um tips can you give our listeners 
to traveling in Africa and, and what they what they should seek to experience uh, to really really understand Africa. I realize it's that there's lots of content, yeah. there's lots of different countries there, but you know, give us a, give us a flavor. Oh my gosh. Well, have a think about what you want. So do you want to go for the safari? Do you want to go for beaches? Do you want to go for culture and history? Do you want to combine it as well? So there's an, you know, you can either get a few different things in one country or maybe combine two countries together. Um, I'd recommend if it's your first time in Africa, I'd recommend going through a really knowledgeable, experienced travel agent like yourself, Debbie. I know you've got such a great love for for Africa and you've and also you've been. So it's really important yeah. that you're working with an agent that has been. There's just small things like you might want to go and see the migration in the Maasai Mara, but if your agent doesn't know the timings of it, then you're going to miss out and it's not going to work. Um, but yeah, there's so many different places that you can go to. And yes, like I said, you've got, you've, I mean, oh, it's just so much fun. You've got um, Mozambique, you've got beautiful beaches and amazing islands. They do have a bit of wildlife there. You've got Malawi, which is just a phenomenal country and it's quite small as well. So really easy to travel. Um, and there are some phenomenal places to stay. You've got beautiful little islands in Lake Malawi. You've got the lushness of the safari world as well. Um, if you want to go for full on safari, you've obviously got my favorite, which is my second home, the Okavanga Delta, um, yes. which is in Botswana and that's phenomenal. Um, if you want to go for somewhere really fun, Ghana is great. Ghana is really fun. Um, okay. There's just so much. And actually, they, they had, yeah, they had some good wildlife stuff there too, actually. Um, they are an incredibly yeah. warm country as well. Very welcoming. It's really, really so welcoming. friendly. And I think you've touched on the point there as well. I, I strongly believe that Africa is a very misunderstood continent. Mm. And... You know, when I when I talk about Africa, I do sense that some people are thinking, oh, gosh, that's that sounds a bit wild. And yes, I mean, it is wild because it's not your standard package holiday. But I can honestly say that in the 20, 20 years I've been traveling and mostly solo traveling there, too, I have only ever experienced people to be kind and friendly and so hospitable. And there's just such a warmth that you've just mentioned in every country I've been to. And it's and the connections and the interactions are just so meaningful and genuine yeah. it's it's amazing wonderful one of the um quite a number of our listeners and people who we keep in touch with are very active uh, individuals um and i recall um that you did a cycle ride through <laughs> the tuli tuli mountains if it was the tuli tuli mountains with yeah. with the marmite kit on could you just yeah. tell us about your cycling experience? Okay, well, I do like cycling. I like road cycling. And obviously, I love Africa. So when one of my safari guide friends, who, whose wedding I also photographed in Botswana, mentioned there was an amazing race called the Tour de Tuli, which is quite a full-on hardcore mountain bike race ride. Um, it's four days in three countries. It's South Africa, Zimbabwe and Botswana so it's in the Thule block where the countries join and yeah you could sign up we had to fundraise for their charity which was children in the wilderness so obviously I said yes um, and I thought Africa bicycle happy days I can do that um, but actually I hadn't been on a mountain bike before so I had to get all the prep and everything sorted for that and went out and did this it was actually really tough and technical and very challenging ride. But I came out with a lot of scrapes, bumps and bruises. However, I came out in one piece. So it was a phenomenal, it was a phenomenal experience. And obviously being able to just incorporate being in Africa, having adventure and obviously raising money for a charity that I am very, very, I'm very passionate about. I've actually photographed for children in the wilderness in a couple of their countries. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was insane. Yes. And of course, conservation and communities in Africa are so incredibly dependent on the tourist, the person visiting there. Yeah. Um, and I certainly feel that um, when it comes to the time that we can open up the world and we can start traveling again, how 
we really do need to consider the person who's at the very end of the supply chain of our travel and reconsider. And if we regard the individuals, whether it be the guides, the drivers, the cooks, the, 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 the gentleman who walks us through the lodge back to our room safely, if yeah. we value their service and we value their community, we value their environment, we have to be able to focus back in on our hospital, on the hospitality sector, focusing back into that conservation, back into those communities, because we've all suffered and yet not a fraction of what they have lost out in the last year. I know you feel passionately about this. I feel passionately about it. What, what are the first, some of the first steps that we could take to re-engage and help these communities? Well, I think it's important to get out there and, and get spending our money out there as well. Obviously, be aware of who you're booking with and what the values of that organisation are. So I've been fortunate enough to work with several amazing safari companies. Um, obviously, Africa is where I go the most, so I'll, I'll focus on that. But the, they've, they've got really good community and conservation focus where they are, I mean, even now during COVID, these communities are relying 100% on safari tourists. And obviously for the last year, there have been none. So it's, you know, seeing what these, what these companies are doing in terms of supporting and yeah, just, just helping them really. So yeah, it's very essential. Yeah, I think that there are some um, fabulous opportunities to really engage with local communities, be mm. it through walks or through um, it, the, the local lodge employees, the guides, and the guides go back to their homes in the evenings. So, uh, there are many, many fine examples of that, that sort of responsible travel. And certainly I think Africa is an area that um, will respond, will welcome us back with open arms if we can be responsible to look to the right community to the yeah. right operators in order to support that most definitely completely um actually during lockdown um i had an amazing collaboration which was with i think there were 13 of us in total 13 um photographers from around the world they were wildlife photographers of the most highest standard and we collaborated to make a digital ebook which was of our wildlife photos and the proceeds from that went to communities um, who were affected, safari, photographic safari communities who were affected by the halt of tourism due to the pandemic. So, you know, there, there are even ways to support communities now and, and also you don't have to go to Africa to support. So you, there, are, there are charities and organisations out there really making a difference and That's providing a massive lifeline for these, for these communities. And, and thank you for bringing that back up because it was, it must have been a good six months ago with Tatenda, was it That's called Tatenda? Yes. Um, so for anybody uh, listening in, please um, go to Juliet's page because, and perhaps Juliet, you may be able to put it back up again and look for Tatenda because the book is just beautiful. It costs $5.00. You get it electronically and you, so you've got a copy for it on your, obviously on your PC, your iPad, whatever it is. But that, those five dollars um, goes directly to the African communities that Tatenda is supporting. So um, definitely I think it's very worthwhile us, for both of us to mention that and put it back on our, back on our streams again. Thank you. And I, believe that, and I believe that there's um, a second edition being in the pipeline as well. So when that comes out, Fabulous. I will let you know, Debbie. Fabulous. So talking about photography, we all love to take our cameras or our iPhones out with us. Um, what's, what top piece of equipment would you recommend to our listeners to take on their holidays for some lovely photos? Oh, good question. Well, I think you're as good as the camera that you've got in your hand. So number one, get a camera in your hand. Um, obviously, <laughs> I mean, even, do you know what, even the iPhones are so good at the moment. So, you know, if that's, if that's, you know, photography is one of those worlds that you, you always want the be bigger, better, faster, more expensive thing. But you know what, just because you have the best camera in the world doesn't make you the best photographer in the world. So just make do with what you've got. Obviously, 
think properly if you plan properly if you are going away then see you know what your lenses are do you ideally have a good zoom lens can you get it can you get hold of a good zoom lens do you know about zoom lenses obviously i'm talking more along the safari kind of world um so be prepared prepare ahead of your trip and get to know your equipment because there's nothing the amount of safari guests i've seen turn up with brand new cameras they haven't even looked at the manual they haven't even got the right sim memory card for it and you know we're rocking up with this amazing leopard sighting and they're trying to work out you know how oh is the lens cap oh but i haven't put a battery in you know and it's it's just it's just such a waste of that experience because they're not able to be present um so yes get familiar with your camera gear try it out you can even um if, if you're undecided on what lenses you want or what camera you want maybe hire something here here at home and mm -hmm. you can have a play with it um and get used to it or you can even hire stuff, you know, and if you like that, obviously you could buy it, but equally maybe look at an option of hiring gear when you are at your destination. So that could be an option and could save you having to spend, you know, tons of money on a, on a big lens. Obviously a big lens is a wonderful asset for being on Safari. And there are a few little gizmos that are a nice, um, a nice substitute to a massive bulky lens. So for the Canon cameras, which I shoot with Canon, you can actually get little extenders, which is a little piece that slots between the camera body and your zoom lens. It's not compatible with every lens, so do check the compatibility, but you can get ones and they give a magnification of your existing focal length. So the oh. Canon have two types, they have 1.2, is that 1.2 and one no, but 1.4 and times two so it just time times two of your of your lens zoom um and it's just a small piece which is obviously a nice um yeah it doesn't weigh as much as a big lens so that's an option as well um also well, yeah no sorry we've just got a couple of comments coming up we went, wow didn't know that so fabulous keep the tips yeah, coming do, do do check the compatibility so if you've got a nice 70 to 200 um like an f2.8 which is one of the most amazing lenses you can get an extender i'm not sure about the other lenses it's compatible with but yeah it's definitely a nice extra bit of zoom which which as a wildlife photographer what we all love um another thing is take cleaning kit with you so it's so dusty out on safari so take your lens cleaner take your lens cleaning cloth you've also got the little puffer things i think it's called a puffer thing um the, and it just blows the, i know i'm not like tote setting all the time um and it just blows the dust off the lens as well so that's a really good thing and just try and get in the habit of cleaning your lenses every night i i need to work on that very very interesting very interesting and we've been asking all other of our listeners um what do you always travel what do you always take on your travels what's the one item you will not travel without and you can't say the camera that's okay. not allowed <laughs> cameras are standard um oh well if it's a new country that i haven't been to before then i will take a travel guidebook and my go-to travel guidebooks are the brat travel guidebooks i just think the information in in it is so it's just it's fantastic and i've met hillary brat and her and her team are amazing so that is just a standard um and it's also i've tried the whole digital um travel books on your phone and on a kindle and stuff but there's it's just not the same um being able to just flip open the book and point to a page, you know, if you're in a fix and you need to ask a local for some help or direction, you can just open up the book really quickly. Whereas on the digital screen, you're just trying to find the page and it's just a bit of a nightmare. So I'd always recommend a book. Obviously it's a little bit more to your luggage allowance for the weight, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. Um, another thing I always pack is a travel washing line so there's there's it's such a geeky thing but it's just essential it's like a bungee cord with two hooks on the end and you know there are so many times when you're i'm just traveling in and staying in one one night at each place so you haven't always got the luxury of being able to put your your clothes in to be laundered 
so just doing a little sink wash of your bits and pieces and inevitably I'm traveling in a hot country so it dries so quickly overnight but yeah my travel my travel washing line is definitely one of my go-to's um my Sw I've got a Swiss army knife which yep. is just a tiny one and I have that with me for most of my photo shoots I take it to weddings because inevitably you've got the bride in need of a label being cut out somewhere but um just it's so handy when traveling and also for packing travel cubes packing cubes oh my gosh absolute game changer just being able to keep your bag really organized i mean i don't actually i try not to travel with that much stuff in my check-in luggage it's if i'm going away for a month to six weeks trip it's usually about seven kgs of stuff that i check in just because my camera bag is so heavy, it's usually double that in weight. And I'm trying to kind of hide the fact that my camera bag is so heavy and just by rocking up with a small, you know, hold luggage. Um, but having little travel packing cubes are just fantastic. And also remember to have one for your, for your laundry packing cube yes. as well. So you can just keep your little bag organized, but it's an absolute game changer. Fabulous. Thank you for that. We've got a couple of questions coming in and any to any of our listeners, if you've got a question for Juliet, please pop it up into the question box. But one question that's come in is, are you self-taught with your photography or did you did somebody train you? So I'm kind of self-taught on safari with fellow safari guides who were also doing the digital photography thing at the same time, too. So it was back in 2006 and there was, there was a little cluster of four of us and we'd all invested in um, digital cameras and yeah, two were safari guides and then another was um, a dear friend and we were both coordinating the safaris and our job was to be out on safari every day. So we just literally launched into taking photos and just loving every minute of it and it was just mm. so satisfying and fun and creative and it was just such a wonderful learning environment so we'd snap the pictures and then excitedly review them that evening and look at each other's thing. oh wow how do you do that what settings that oh my gosh and, oh what about this and try so it was really just practical learning actually which was just such a nice a nice natural way to learn um yeah highly recommended and I think just the the best thing about digital photography is you've got that screen right on the back of the camera so you've got the immediate it, you know it doesn't matter give it give the settings a go try the the lowest setting and the highest setting and then see what's a happy medium for you or what fits your style and it may be something that you know by completely overexposing that shot it actually gives you a really crazy result which is which works for you and your style so it's just you know there's no wrong way with photography and um is you just get out and play that's that's the most important thing have fun and play with it one of the that's perfect because it leads on to uh, another question about would you recommend um can you recommend any photography classes now i know that you actually do your your studio does one-on-ones and photography lessons or any youtube um information particularly around cameras and the um there's just some of the simple settings that could could work could be tips for our listeners yeah 100 percent um i think yeah get out there and do stuff youtube is phenomenal so it depends you know obviously it depends on what your camera is and what your needs are and there's most probably an answer there but then i think an important thing is to actually get out there and be practical with it as well because there's one thing sitting in front of a screen and then there's another thing just being out in the, in the open air and actually using your camera so and it's practice that makes perfect and again touching on what I mentioned earlier you just get, get to know your camera get to know the settings get to know the extremes of each setting and and you know and, and get a feel for how your style will flourish too and that's a wonderful way to, to experience that and grow when you're out photographing um yes I do offer photography lessons so um I do one-to-ones as well as I've been doing street photography workshops, which has been a wonderful thing out and about in Brick Lane, just taking great photos of the market and just really great street fo street scene photos. Um, I can also do the wildlife thing. So we've actually got Richmond Park on our doorstep. Yes. Um, could always go to Longleat or, you know, another 
wildlife place and just take phenomenal pictures so definitely if, if anybody's got any questions or need any help with photography please i'd be delighted to help or i'd be delighted to point them in the direction where they can get more information to answer their questions fabulous thank you so much for that and where would you what's your first or what's your go-to place when we finally come out of isolation and we can travel <laughs> where do you want to go to next okay well, obviously, know, sorry obviously it's going to say i'm going to say africa um yeah i think i think it probably have to be botswana because i just my heart's there it's like a second home <laughs> um so that's yeah that's amazing um there were some really well i actually did just before i went so last year was actually quite a crazy year for travel for me even though we only had a really short amount of time before the lockdown so before that 26th day around the world private jet trip i was in sierra leone for the whole of january yes. which was amazing um i'm actually reliving some of those travels on my instagram stories at the moment just because there was some stuff that i haven't actually posted and wanted to share so um yeah west africa has so i've done senegal sierra leone and ghana that's definitely got my attention um on the top of the list obviously when when travel is possible and obviously bearing in mind when political situations might have calmed down as well in whichever country it is um yeah. i'd love to i'd love to get to sao tome and principe that is <laughs> of course yes we discussed this yeah just I, I don't know much about it. I don't know anyone that, that's been. It's um, just in case you, the listeners don't know, it's a small cluster of islands just off the west coast of Africa. And it's called Sao Tome and Principe. Um, and there's the most amazing retreat there called the Bomb Bomb Retreat. Oh, I did not know. Okay, so there we I will, go. I will so go and we, report back. We, okay? Yes, we, we, will, we, will send, we will exchange some notes on that one. But Sao Tome and Principe, uh, yes, it's a a lovely group of little islands as you say off the west coast oh Africa. amazing so yes yeah, so i'm in prince bay i'd love to get to um benin as well yeah. in west africa i'd love to get to sudan um south sudan just i've seen some photos from that and it just looks wild and then also north sudan and they so interestingly north sudan have more pyramids along the nile than egypt does who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? So, no. yeah. Oh, top, I, top, top tip, top fact. I know. So that's, that's, that's been on my radar for quite a while. Um, but yeah, there's, and there's so many other places. I mean, oh, anyway, yeah. Anywhere in Africa, I'd just be thrilled to go. Oh, Juliet, it's just been so lovely talking with you and for you to share your uh, tips on photography, certainly tips for what we should go traveling with and giving us all a, an absolute inspiration for, um, get, for visiting Africa and doing something slightly different in Africa. So I think Africa's just got so much to offer. We tend to think Africa safari, Africa wildlife. Yeah. And so you've just illustrated with the, the history of the pyramids in the Sudan. Um, the depth of culture and the depth of history throughout Africa is just phenomenal. And on that subject, we cannot leave this conversation and not mention Ethiopia. So oh, that's e top of e my list. I have not been there oh yet. I've not had a chance. Ethiopia is just phenomenal. It's very, very, very different. And, and that's the beauty of these African countries, the diversity between them, the difference in the culture, the difference in the history. I mean, it's just phenomenal. So um, Ethiopia is amazing. If you like history, um, it will just blow your mind. They've got um, these, these um, churches, which are rock hewn churches. They're built in the ground, which is just, it's, it's, it's insane. Um, and and the, the culture and the religion is still so vibrant and alive and the churches mm. are still used and the ceremonies there are amazing. And I stumbled across I stumbled, well, stumbled into Lalabella, this particular area, um, during Easter, which just so happens to be the holiest time of the year. Um, and, and there were just these oh, just amazing ceremonies, monks and priests everywhere. And I got adopted by this amazing family there and they invited me to the church with them. So we got to the church at about 10 o'clock at night and left at about four in the morning. And it was just, 
it was amazing. But there's also, you've got the Danakil depression, yes. which is the lowest point of the earth. Is that correct? It's the hottest, the hottest point of... Hottest yes, hottest I think it's the earth. hottest point. Is it? So yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's about 100 metres below sea level or something. Yeah. I remember that correctly off the top of my head. Um, and then you've got the Oma Valley and you've got the Simeon Mountains and you've got oh, the Ethiopian Wolf, which is, anyway, there's just, there's so much. So pop that on your list of things to look at if you are considering Africa as a travel destination. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. And just finishing on a lovely message that's come through from uh, John Hobley, who's saying incredible photographer. Oh, so for everybody God. who's listening, who has got... <laughs> <laughs> who's got any doubts about Juliet's um, calibers as a, as a photographer of wildlife, of people, of culture, of places, then just keep in touch, <clears throat> touch in with Juliet and take a look at some of her stuff. And Juliet, please, thank you so much for having joined us. Would you pop up the Tadenda ebook again yeah. on your site? I'll do the same on our site. Thank you. Um, all the money from the uh, purchase of this ebook goes directly to the community, some communities in Africa. All the photographs have been donated by a, a worldwide eclectic group of amazing photographers, including Juliet. So thank you so much, Juliet. You've been a superstar for joining us and look forward to keeping in touch. And Debbie, thank you so much. And thank you to all the people that have tuned in. And um, there's been some really lovely messages there. So I'm so grateful. And yes, Debbie, I can't wait to chat more travels with you again soon. And yeah, let's hope those days return, hopefully soon. <laughs> Have a good evening. Night, night. Bye, thank everyone. you so much. Bye. Bye.